So I, again, had this on my Instagram, uh, I think about a week ago at this stage, um, I was on a bit of a rant and I said, I asked people like, would it be of any use to any of you guys if I went through maybe like a timing scenario with certain questions and try and work through a question in real time? Um, and a lot of people said, yeah, so we're going to do it today in Spanish and hopefully we'll get one done for French and uh, maybe next week as well, because this is going to work the exact same for both languages. But what we're going to have a look at today is timing and tackling the diary entry. So to put it into perspective, obviously a lot of people leave um, Spanish, especially very early because they're so used to having to write so much more in that timing conditions, obviously with things like English Paper 2 and history and geography, all of these subjects, um, you are kind of under a lot more of a time constraint. So I wouldn't get too bogged down in the, in the sense of feeling like you're not going to have enough time to do a good diary entry, you will. But if you are someone who really sticks to the timing that your teacher gives you, I would usually spend about 20 minutes with the diary entry. So I'm just going to throw that up here first, okay? So we're looking at in and around 20 minutes. If we're going to be sticking to, I suppose, like my specifications in terms of how you should use your time in the exam. So what I'm going to do is hopefully I'll get this. I should get this in 20 minutes. I'd be a little bit worried if I wouldn't. But just to kind of talk you through what I would do before I start writing anything. So if you have a look here with me, right, we're going to have a look at the 2019 diary entry so that we know it's going to be, it's not going to be kind of too old school in the sense of the question style. But this is exactly what I would be doing for the first five minutes of these 20 minutes, okay? And why, the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of students love to just jump in and I suppose just start writing straight away. And I completely get that, and especially when you're in the middle of an exam season and like this could be potentially be the last piece of Spanish you ever write, um, which is obviously really exciting, but I really cannot recommend enough proofreading your answer at the end and planning your answer at the beginning, okay? So this is exactly what I would have done when I was in sixth year as well. Okay, so we've got four different things up on the board here before we even have a look over here. So the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is read the question fully. Now what I mean by that is, if we look at this question, so again, this is 2019. Um, so you are in Almeria and your flight home has been cancelled. Write a diary entry in Spanish mentioning all of the following points. That whole first bit there, before we even get into the four points that we have to include in our diary entry according to the marking scheme, this is going to give us our context, okay? That if we're trying to push for a better grade, that we want the examiner to know that like we can make our diary entry sound more like a diary entry that you're not going to go in and write a diary and just jump in and say like my parents are very angry like you're going to give me context for it okay so this is going to be our context so we're going to look for our buzzwords or our verbs in that context that we might have to include at the beginning of our answer so what i would have done there is i'm obviously going to mention the word almeria the word vuelo is the word for my flight and the verb to cancel is the verb can fill out so i'm going to need all three of them to put my answer into context and then I'm going to, once I've identified my buzzwords or my verbs that I'm going to need for my context, I'm going to start reading the points and then planning those. So again, this is all the first five minutes of um, this question. So let's have a look. So we've got, say that your parents are very angry, explain why. So if I'm reading that, the first thing I'm going to write as a student and hopefully still as a teacher is that that's the SEC looking to see, do I know the difference between when to use ser and when to use estar? So I've written down here that I'm going to use the verb estar because I'm talking about the emotion, okay? And the easiest way to think of that is to say how you feel or where you are, you always use the verb estar, okay? So that's the first thing I'm going to mark for myself. Now, if we're trying to be a little bit outside the box, a little bit extra for point two, you feel great because it's the best hotel you have stayed in. Rather than again, use the verb estar, I'm going to show off a good depth of vocabulary and I'm going to use the verb to feel, which is sentirse. And actually, what I should even have written beside that is that that is going to become an E to an IE stem changing verb, okay? So instead of saying me sento, I'm gonna say me siento. So this E in the middle of the verb here is going to change to an IE, okay? Radical changing verb. So that's the second point. So that's my kind of key thing there that I'm going to use to try and make sure that my answer reads very well and a little bit different to everyone else. Okay, the, sec the third point I should say, there is a fabulous pool, free Wi-Fi, and you can be online all day and then my favorite part of the whole question, in brackets, and night, okay? So obviously the verb to be able to, or the verb to can in English, is this guy here, poder, and I would 
I would really hope that all six years know this, at least to know to ask to go to the bathroom in class using this verb. And again, I'm just going to make a note for myself. This is going to be an O verb to a UE verb. So it's another stem changing verb as well. Okay, and then my last point there, say what your plans are for the remainder of your stay. I'm going to keep that nice and simple for myself. And I'm just going to use the near future. So like the boy, a, uh, and then whatever the tense, um, sorry, whatever verb I'm going to use after that. And the reason for that is that's way easier to remember especially when you're tired, you've done a load of leaving through exams and you're just not bothered anymore. It's way easier to get that tense right than it is to get the distant future tense right, okay? And this is probably more appropriate anyway because we are talking about the near future. Okay, so then we have point number three and this is where people are probably looking at the board being like, what's going on? So when I actually get into writing my diary entry, in terms of feedback that we've gotten from examiners before, I would advise maybe to have two or three two or three sentences per point, three being kind of the max. Again, we're just being marked on four valid, well-made points. But if I'm looking for like well-made in terms of a diary entry, I want it to be a little bit more dramatic than a note, okay? Because I'm obviously using my diary to like account for the whole day. So it's going to be a little bit more personal, a little bit more emotional. So I'm calling them chunky chips. That is in honor of my junior cert history teacher who said that, as an examiner, you would always so much rather a student bulk something up with relevance rather than just give them a little small skinny chip that isn't really worth anything. That you want a good chunky chip, you want a good solid point, something that is you know very definite in what it's trying to say and that just helps you stand out a little bit. So hopefully that'll make a bit more sense as we go through actually writing this. And then the last thing I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to proofread my verbs here to make sure I have them all correct but then at the end of my answer I'm going to proofread and please do not underestimate the value of that. Okay so now let's have a look at actually writing this answer together. So you'll see up here I've got uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco y seis right so if you're going to work through this with me you might want to just scribble those down in the similar page or sorry in a similar layout on your page okay. So I used to call this I even do this with junior search as well like a six station layout. Okay, and they're going obviously where they're meant to be on the page. So the first thing I'm going to do, and even though there's no formal marks going for layout or anything like that for the diary entry, I still want my answer to look like a diary entry. I want to leave, I want the examiner to feel as though like they actually are reading a diary. And if I was, if I was writing a diary, I'd probably write something like this. Okay, the es hoy, hoy es lunes. So I'm going to write like a day and make sure if you are doing this that you always use a small letter with your day. So lunes, and then I might say, 22 horas, or something along those lines. And again, just to give my answer good context, obviously you're going to be writing a diary, preferably at the end of the day, I would imagine at the end of the day. So I have Monday, 10 o'clock, okay? If you are more used to writing a date or something, that's fine. Just something that's going to make your diary look a bit more like a diary. Okay, paso número tres, step number three. Querido diario. Okay, dear diary, please do not ever change that. I don't care if you are a boy or a girl or whatever. This is always going to be querido diario. Okay, dear diary, because this is a masculine noun, so this is going to always match it. So it doesn't matter if you're a girl, it's still going to be querido diario. Okay, so now let's have a look at our question again, right? So I just have it here on my iPad. So I'm in Almeria, my flight home has been cancelled. Okay, so if I was to look at that straight away, I'm going to think that it's a negative diary entry. But then if we go through it again, you feel great and there's a fabulous feel. So this is obviously going to be more of a positive thing, right? But the first hack I'm going to give you is your opening sentence. And you can use this, these two words for positive or negative diary entries. Vaya día, what a day, okay? Se puede utilizar eso para hablar de un día fantástico, un día horrible. You can use that to talk about a fantastic day, an awful day, anything like that. But by a día, and we're going to remember to put our upside down exclamation mark at the beginning of that as well. Okay, so what a day. Okay, acabo. So acabo de pasar un día increíble. Okay. I've just had an incredible day, okay? And this is a lovely verb structure to start off with because it's a, like a, I suppose, a compound tense that we've turned it into. A cabo de is I have just, and it is always followed by the infinitive. And pasar is the verb to spend time or to pass time. So I've just had an incredible day. I've just spent an incredible day, okay? Cabo de pasar un día increíble. So now what I'm going to do is, again, putting it into context. So como ya sabes? So I would assume that if, you know, we're writing a diary entry, 
we're probably writing them quite consistently. So I'm going to kind of address the diary and say, as you know, so como ya sabes, as you already know, estoy aquí en Almería. I'm here in Almería con mis padres. Y, okay, so I'm here in Almería with my parents. Y hoy íbamos a volver a casa. Okay. So, as you know, as you already know, I'm here in Almería with my parents and today we were meant to, or we were going to return home. Okay, íbamos, we were going to return home. So I'm going to say, fuimos al aeropuerto. And now I'm going to jump into my kind of, my first point. Fuimos al aeropuerto, we went to the airport. Pero nuestro vuelo Wait, and I'm going to come back over here. So I've got Almeria in, got my um, vuelo in, and now I'm going to talk about um, the fact that it was cancelled. So fue cancelado. So I'm going to use the past participle of the verb cancelar, so cancelled. So nearly kind of using it as an adjective, like it was cancelled, okay? So nuestro vuelo fue cancelado. Mis padres. So now I'm going to jump into my first point. So I've got... I'm going to use the verb estar now and I'm going to get the emotion in as well, okay, mis padres? So they are están enfadados, they are very angry. Porque tienen que volver a trabajo. Lo antes posible. Y ahora no pueden. Okay. So there's my first point there. So my parents are really angry because they have to return to work as soon as possible and now they can't. Y ahora no pueden. Okay. So I'm actually going to leave that as my first point now because I've kind of, my context and stuff has given me enough length for that. So I'm going to go into my second point, okay? So again, just to reiterate what the second point was. So you feel great because it's the best hotel you have stayed in. So because I've just spoken about my parents and how they feel, I'm going to kind of use a connector now to differentiate between them, okay? So I'm going to say, sin embargo, so however, me siento and obviously, I am a girl, so I'm going to say fantastica, but boys, you would have to change it to fantastico. Me siento fantastica, right? I feel, so there's my reflexive pronoun, me, and then my e to i, e, stem changing verb. Me siento fantastica. Por qué? Ahora tenemos que pasar. Otra noche más en el hotel. So, however, I feel great because now we have to spend another night again in the hotel, en el hotel. Okay. Y es el mejor hotel donde me he quedado. En mi vida entera, okay? So just to run through what that means in English in case anyone's looking at it and is a little bit confused. Okay, so sin embargo, however, and again, that's differentiating between the fact that my parents are angry and I'm really happy, okay? I feel fantastic because now, tenemos que, we have to spend another night, and again, noche is feminine, otra. We have to spend another night in the hotel and it is the best, es el mejor hotel, donde, where me he quedado, where I have stayed, so this is from the verb quedarse, okay, so it's reflexive, and we use quedarse usually to talk about staying in a hotel or something, and this is in the um, perfect tense, okay, donde me he quedado en mi vida entera, in my whole life, okay. So because the next point then is kind of describing the hotel, I'm going to put them together, okay, because it's going to read a little bit better, okay, I. so there is, okay, what have we got, a fabulous pull, hay una piscina, 
Um, I own a piscina, and just to kind of, I know we'd never really say this in English, like it's stupendous, but I've already used fantastic, I've used incredible, and I'm going to keep showing off all of these different synonyms to the examiner, okay? I own a piscina, estupenda, free Wi-Fi, everyone's favorite thing, Wi-Fi, gratis, and gratis is the word we use for free when we're talking about money. Libre is what we use when we're talking about time, okay? So, um, wifi gratis, and I can, y puedo. So again, there's my, I've got my first stem changing and my second stem changing verb into my answer now. Y puedo, now I'm going to use estar because technically speaking, if I'm talking about being online, I'm talking about where I am. So I'm going to use estar to say how you feel or where you are. Always use the verb estar. Puedo estar en línea todo el día or durante todo el día if you wanted. And then in brackets, I'm going to do the same thing as, as the SEC just to be a little bit cheeky, okay? En línea todo el día y la noche. Pero mis padres... No saben eso. Okay, so and this is a nice kind of like it was a very bad attempt at humor, but we we all love a bit of a bad joke. Okay, so there is a stupendous pool, really nice pool, free Wi-Fi, and I can be online all day. Okay, and then e la noche and night, but my parents don't know that. Okay, so that's me being like, I'm really funny. Please, can I have some marks, examiner? Okay. Um, so say what your plans are for the remainder of your stay. So I'm just going to finish this off. I'm going to just start a new point so it's nice and easy for the examiner to, di um, to differentiate between them. So um, I'm going to say, so esta noche, so tonight. So again, esta is this, so literally this night, okay? So esta noche vamos a cenar. We are going to have dinner en un restaurante. So we're going to keep this nice and easy. In un restaurante típico de aquí. Okay, so we're going to have dinner. So fenar is the verb to have dinner. So we're going to have dinner in a, I suppose, traditional restaurant here. Um, quiero. So again, this is me making it a chunky chip. I'm adding a little bit of information on. So I want quiero probar. Probar is the verb to try food. El pulpo y la tortilla. Okay, so I want to try, um, el pulpo is disgusting, but it makes it sound like you know a little bit more about Spanish food than just talking about la tortilla. El pulpo is a Spanish dish that's made with octopus. Um, so I want to try octopus and Spanish omelette. Now I'm actually going to just move this five in one sec, okay, because I want to just make sure this isn't really squashed. So. Um, and then I'm going to say tomorrow morning, just to finish off, so mañana, por la mañana. So tomorrow morning, mañana por la mañana, vamos a ir de compras. And I'm going to show the examiner, I know that the verb to go shopping in Spanish is actually the verb to go of shopping. Okay, so I'm going to use the preposition de. Vamos a ir de compras. En el mercado local. In the local market. Okay, and that's plenty then. Okay, so all I'm going to do then, I would have had the number five beside this, but I obviously don't know how to um, structure my board. But right under it, you're just going to have a nice sign off phrase. So that's everything. Eso es todo. That's all from today. Tengo que acostarme. I need to go to bed soon. Okay, so acostar is the acostar say I should say sorry is a reflexive verb to go to bed. So I have to go to bed soon. And all I do then is underneath that in the middle of my page just sign my name. Okay, or like hasta mañana and your name or something like that. Girls, we do not need X's and O's after your name. We don't need any smiley faces, any love hearts, anything like that. Literally just this. You can write your name straight away underneath it or hasta mañana. Or um, I'll, you know, I'll write, I'll write again tomorrow. But also, and without making a joke out of it, please don't start doing weird things in the diary entry, like saying, "Dear diary, hey, how are you?" Or write back. Okay, I hope to hear from you soon. The diary is never writing back, guys. Okay, it's not real. I apologise. But nice and easy. So I would spend maybe if that was in an exam, 
if I'm doing five minutes of planning, I'd maybe do, say, 12 minutes of writing, and then that leaves me with about three minutes at the end then to proofread my work, which is the last thing on my list. Um, and I'd be making sure that a masculine noun has a masculine adjective, a feminine noun has a feminine adjective, okay, that I haven't made silly mistakes like that, that are ultimately going to cost me a lot of language marks throughout all four of my points, okay? So, again, 20 minutes, nice and easy, keep it separate, have a few different paragraphs so the examiner isn't overwhelmed when they look at your work, have a little plan. This is also great for an examiner to see that you're really trying to make an effort to use good Spanish. So, I would definitely recommend this. And hopefully next week we'll have one done for you guys for French as well, okay? So, um, muchísimas gracias y que tengáis un buen día. Adiós.